Hello, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to this session of AAC in the Cloud. Our presenter today will be Beth Morin, and her presentation is Getting Started Ideas for Introducing AAC, and we will turn the time over to her. Good morning, everyone. Um, I am Beth Warren. I was supposed to be co-presenting with my coworker, Sabina LeClaire, but she is out sick. Unfortunately, COVID um, has taken her voice away and she was not able to communicate with us today. So, um, but we both work on a grant with the uh, Department of Education called Tennessee Talks here in Tennessee over the last four and a half years. We've been working with kids and their school teams along with parents to train them on using the communication systems, how to use it, troubleshooting, um, and getting them to that point where they're using it more efficiently. So the first thing in terms of what we need to talk about is number one, how do we learn to talk? We learn to talk by watching the people around us. Um, every child is um, spoken to um, by many different people um, across the years. Um, and so um, when they are infants, we are talking to them consistently, giving them gestures, showing them how we move our mouths. When they ooh and ah, we ooh and ah back at them um, and gradually work to the point where we get to, they start saying words. Um, and at first it's one word at a time. Then once they get about 50 words, they start to pair words together. Um, and then they start to make short sentences, sometimes longer sentences, adding in different modifiers, um, to get to the point where they reach language mastery. Um, with a child using AAC, we're going to go through these same language stages. We just need to use the AAC device and the whole team needs to use it. Um, the um, math of it out there from Jane Corston is by a child is 18 months, they've heard over 4,000 words of spoken language. Um, but we don't expect them to be fluent speakers. So, but if a child wants to reach that level only using the communication system or alternative communication system um, twice a week with our therapist, it's gonna take them 84 years to reach the level of an 18 month old. But if the whole team uses it around the child and introduces it and implements it as a communication system, um, it usually takes somewhere around three to five years. So we start with two different types of vocabulary. Um, we hear about core words um, a lot in AAC. Um, these are the words that make up 70 to 80% of what we say. Um, we use them consistently. They go across environments. Um, we say them at home. We say them at school. We say them at the doctor's office. We say them at the park. We say them in many different environments and can be used for many different things. But you also have your fringe vocabulary. This is your specific vocabulary. Um, while a kid can say go, we don't know what go means, whether it's for me to go away or for they want the truck to go, they want the car to go, they want to go outside. We don't know what that go means without having that fringe vocabulary of a location. Um, these are the other 20% of the words that we say. Um, they're important. Um, but they can't be used alone without having those um, core words. So we need both of them. So when a child begins to talk or when we start communicating as children, toddlers, that kind of stuff, we start with ball, mama, juice, milk, those type of words. Then we gradually add in that uh, core word with it sometimes. Want mama, go outside. Then we start adding in the core and fringe and doing a little bit more where we're adding in some of those pronouns um and more verbs then we get to where we're adding in some of those grammatical markers we're pausing we're um, adding in again more words such as you know adding more descriptor words positional words all that type of stuff as we communicate but we need both types of vocabulary to be able to communicate efficiently so our biggest thing with implementation is we need to show them how to use it so this is one of the quotes out there that seems to, um, it's one that I like to use. Um, having a communication device does not make us an effective communicator any more than having a piano makes me a music musician. So we have to show these kids how to use the communication device. So um, 
when we're starting out with an AAC evaluation or assisting with that communication process, we like to use what we call a core word checklist to figure out what words the kids are um, demonstrating comprehension of it. Are they able to communicate it? Um, are they able to use um, some form of the um, words such as describing words, all that. Um, so by looking at what the word, what the student understands, but is not expressing, you will find those core words that are gonna be the easiest to teach on the device as you are teaching them the location of the word, not the meaning and the location. For example, we've had a student we were working with at the end of the school year that um, could proficiently sign help and more. Um, understandable gestures for yes and no. During um, one of the sessions, um, we completed an activity where I intentionally made it difficult for him to obtain the next piece for the game. I started by pausing and waiting, and then I pressed help on his communication device and signed help to him. And then immediately he smiled back and signed help. I pressed help on the communication device and helped him open his jar and got the piece out. After a couple of repetitions, I changed the pattern and waited for him to communicate he needed help. When he signed help, I gave him what he needed help for, gave him the assistance. And then after a little bit more exchanges, he began to press help and or sign for help interchangeably back and forth, just demonstrating he understood that he could demonstrate it two ways in terms of communicating that word. So again, this checklist helps us find those core words that are gonna be easier to implement versus other words that we may need to spend more time on. So when we're modeling, um, we give an example um, as on the previous slide, but there are those words that they don't know. So then we have a little more work to do um, of teaching the location, but also teaching the meaning of that word. For example, go, we will want to model this word in a variety of contexts so that they know um, that it can be used in multiple contexts, but we also need to um, teach them the meaning again that it can be go to the bathroom go up go down go fast go slow go outside go has so many different meanings that we have to teach not just the location but the meaning of the word also so we try to model these words um, that fit into the context of what you're doing but also think about which ones may be more motivating or be associated to motivating activities because we need that motivation to get them to buy in to using the communication system. So again, we start with modeling one word, the word go. And then the next time, once they start modeling that one word, we're gonna start modeling those two words and putting together words. Um, want more, we like it, we don't like it, we need help. Um, then we start getting to those simple sentences, those small sentences um, or phrases that you know make um, clarification easier. Um, so we always want to model one level above what they're doing. Um, so if they're using one word consistently, then we're gonna model two words. Once they start modeling two words consistently, we're gonna then start modeling three to four words consistently. So we communicate for a variety of reasons, to share opinions, to comment, to socialize, to request, to protest and gain information. So in this chart, you will see um, some different words that relate to those different communication intentions. Um, so a lot of times, um, a lot of the kids I've worked with are able to make a choice or request something, but they don't know what to do with that communication device after that. So we have to teach them how to comment, how to start a conversation, teaching them how to go up and introduce themselves, teaching them how to share an opinion about something, um, teaching them to tell somebody no or stop um, or go away. Um, those are pertinent words in their vocabulary that they need to be able to express. So one thing is to look at some of those books that target those core words. Some of these are some of these are board books, but there are books that consistently repeat certain words over and over again. Um, so these are some of those books, um, the Sandra Boynton books, you know, Brown Bear, Brown Bear is always a good one. Um, 
but there are other ones that use different core words. You can highlight those core words when you're reading them. And after reading them so many times, the kid begins to pick up where that word is. And then he can start reading that book and filling in that, that blank space that we leave when we're reading a book. Um, I know some kids have some focus issues. And so I'm like, okay, we may only read one page of this book today. And tomorrow we may read the next page, but we've done a little bit of reading and gradually we work up their focus to be able to give us more focus. We can read more pages and implement it that way. So again, we have to start out small. They may only want to look at one page and we just discuss what's going on that page that we see a bear, that's it. Um, but the next day, oh, what do we see next, you know, on this page book. So some of these smaller books, yes, should only take a few minutes to read because they're very simple books. But for a child who has focus issues, we want to start small and gradually work it up. So we read one page at a time and gradually we start getting more focus. We can read two pages at a time, three pages at a time and gradually work our way up to imp implementing the communication device also, but also getting increasing their focusing skills. So there are lots of different videos out there related to books. Um, you go into YouTube, type any book you're going to look up and they've got it there. Um, so things like uh, there are um, links to YouTube. I know that Mrs. Marlowe does a lot of different books. She's got No David No and The Colors of the Rainbow. Um, again, she introduces communication AAC with those words. Um, and I will show a video a little bit later in the presentation. But these are just some links and we'll have this available to you on our website at TennesseeTalks.org. Um, available to just to some different links to look at in terms of reading books, how to read books, how to implement just kind of showing that process so that if you need to train assistants in the classroom or other teachers on how to use an AAC device while doing the reading process, um, please do so. Also, don't hesitate to use it in the writing process. Um, um, as part of our um, camp we do here in Chattanooga every year, Chatter Camp, is we use, uh, we take pictures of them throughout the camp and they have to write a small sentence or a phrase about that picture. Um, they love this part of it. I have had parents tell me that their kid sleeps with the book that they made for camp um, that week because they just love looking at it and reading through it and seeing different things about themselves. Um, and again, they're able to implement it and use the communication words. Other implementation examples, again, we always want to keep communication fun. Communication is the want to, not a have to. Um, so using it in music, okay, that one song from Frozen many, many years ago, it's been out there for a while. We say let it go at least 15 to 16 times in that song. I've counted. Um, but again, that's a great way to, if they love to watch the YouTube videos kind of thing, let's use it for our purposes of teaching them how to use the communication system. So again, let it go. You're welcome. Um, a lot of those Disney songs have words that repeat in them. Feel free to, you know, look up some of those. Playing it with board games. My turn. Your turn. Oh, look, you go fast you're ahead, you win, I lose, I win, you know. Um, therapists use it with bubbles all the time. Um, during snack time, again, we've used it there. They can choose from their snack what they want to eat. We can use more, um, go, um, high, low, pop. We can use many different words for that. Um, an I Spy game is a great way to use it. Um, I recently, this year in Chatter Camp, used it for charades. So I printed off a whole bunch of different pictures from um, Google, just printed off different pictures of animals and action words that would be in their communication systems and had them act out that example. And then they had to, of course, answer or communicate. This is a want to communicate because we want to win the game. We want to earn the points to win the game. Um, and that helps with finding the location of the animals because they consistently have to go to animals. They consistently have to go to where their verbs are. Um, and verbs like run, jump, walk, eat, drink. Those are some of those verbs that we can use and act out. Um, I also have used um, a word jar. So this is a jar full of rice, but it also has some laminated words inside of it. So I can shake it up and find a word and then have to find it on my communication device. But I've also done jars where I've done for parents and families where they choose a word a day. Um, we talk about that word and we use that word for that day. Again, that just gives the parents a way to learn one word at a time versus overwhelming them with trying to learn the whole communication system. I just need you to model this one word for this day. 
Um, so it's been very helpful. And there are many, many, many other examples in terms of implementation. Again, keep it fun. Communication is a want to, not a have to. So when you're working in the classroom, a lot of times I've been in those classrooms where I've observed the kids and the communication device, the teacher's working on sight words. The sight word list and the core word list are very, very similar. There are a few variations, but not many. I've compared the two. Um, I was working with a kiddo, observing her in the classroom, and she went to math class to do something, and she had never, no one had showed her how to use the communication device for counting, because she had a sheet of stuff, and she had to count and put the number. So I was like, okay, let's count. One, two, but I was using her communication device as I was doing it. So I was using one finger for counting, one finger for showing her where the numbers were on her communication device. Um, it was wonderful, because she started doing it. Um, for reading, getting them to comment and tell us something about the stories. Um, a lot of times when we're reading stuff, we think we have to add vocabulary to the device. Um, instead of having to add different character names and stuff like that, it can be the boy or the man with the yellow hat. Again, in Curious George, um, the blue train. We all know if we're talking about a blue train, more than likely it's Thomas the Tank Engine. Um, we all know that, um, but Blue Train is already in their communication device where we don't have to go in and add something. So when you're looking at reading and stuff like that, figure out different ways of being able to say it um, with the words that are already provided versus having to add in specific vocabulary that you may not have time to do. And again, we only read that one book for that little bit of time, and then we move on to the next book. Um, so spellings, we can do word searches. Um, they can spell out words and use a keyboard on their communication devices to spell words out loud. Um, doing word search games where we have to look for different words and find them. Um, arts and colors. I was painting with a little kiddo, introducing an AAC communication system. I just brought a little truck to paint kind of thing, had some colors to paint. And we were painting and doing things. All of a sudden he got some on his finger kind of thing. And so I then started bottled the word oops kind of thing. It's a different word. It's not one of those standard core words or anything like that, but it was a word that was interesting to him. And so we'd model the word oops kind of thing. I cleaned up his finger and not, you know, got the paint off of it. And then again, it accidentally happened again where he got a little bit on his finger and he immediately went to the communication device to try to find that cool word. Um, so again, I had his interest because it was a new fun word to learn where it was and how to say it. So there are lots of um, the year of core words on um, the Practical AAC website, um, along with um, other support systems. Um, we have a lot of these listed on our website at TennesseeTalks.org. So when we're using AAC out in the community, we need, again, to make it fun. So um, I took a group of kids using AAC to the aquarium last summer. Um, and this is one of the pictures of her. You can see her communication device sitting there on the ledge, which scared us all, but she kept it safe. Um, but anyway, um, teaching them how to say different words, some of those positional words, some of those feelings type thing. Is it rough? Is it smooth? Is it loud? Was it wet? Was it dry? Um, action words like, you know, it's swimming, it's running, it's jumping. Again, we had lots of different things to see at the aquarium and see big and small. And yeah, you know, we had so many different words that we can model throughout the, the walk through the aquarium that it was just awesome to see these kids looking at stuff and then using their communication system to talk about it. Um, and there are some other out and about groups. I don't know if y'all are familiar with this, but if you go to out and about on Facebook, there are some different community groups available in certain areas across the United States. At the park, so when we're at the park, we can use many different words for playing and go there and up and down and slide and swing and sandbox and they can tell us where they want to go. We can also do things like a color walk or a photo walk, have them walk around and take pictures of things and then we can go back home and we can talk about it. Um, we can do um, a sensory walk where they have to find different senses, you know, do you smell something, do you taste something, you know, we might have ice cream at the park, well that was sweet you know, um, but again, keeping it fun, keeping it interesting, not making it the have to, making it the want to, and this is where we can go through and model different things. When we are in different environments, like out in the community, sometimes um, other 
differentiations of our communication system may be needed. So if I'm at the pool, I really don't want my child using the 3000, 4000, or even the iPad with a communication app when they could possibly use some low techs that are laminated that are will be water protected. This is the Pixie Pal that just recently came out um, and it is waterproof. Um, so again, it protects those low techs, but it's something I could have at the pool. I had a mom ask me the other day, she goes, well, he wouldn't take it to the pool and he was fixing to take it in with him kind of thing because he was so used to toting it around. And I said, she goes, I stopped him and told him that if he needed to communicate, he had to come back up here and tell me something. But also looking at some alternative watches or low techs, that kind of stuff, the, some of the slap bracelets you can get for them to be able to communicate on the go. So if they're at a park or at a playground, hauling around that communication device with them is not going to make it easy to play. Um, so that's where we want to implement some of the low tech devices. Um, some playgrounds do have the communication boards. This is one um, set of communication boards that uh, the uh, AT for Kids with Sabina's uh, that Sabina works with um, got a grant to do some playground communication boards for kids at different school systems. Um, and so they were able to get different communication boards out to this is one before it got posted up outside, but it's going to be put on the playground. It hadn't been put up yet, um, but she was able to get a picture with some of the students for us. Um, but it's a communication playground board that has specific communication symbols for the playground. So when we're at the store is a great place to do it if you have time. I know sometimes we don't have time for this um, as parents, um, but we want to have them count by. So if we need to get five peaches, you know, having them count with you to get the five peaches, having you them, this is where we can ask a lot of questions. Where is it? Do you see it? Look around. Do you see a red app? You know, having them help us find things in the store. Of course, we know where everything is because usually when we go to our same old grocery store, we know exactly where the apples are kept, the onions are kept, everything is kept. But again, having them help us do that. Um, if it's you know a planned activity where you know you can have the extra time to implement the kid using their communication device, having them find the items, doing a picture grocery list so they can help you tell what's next on the grocery list having them pick the colors of the items. Do they want the red one or the blue one? Um, again, ways to implement and use it in that setting. So of course at a restaurant, um, it's great for you to put in the different food items at a local restaurant, you know what they would eat. Um, you can add some of the different options also, just in case, you know, sometimes we want nuggets, but sometimes we want chicken strips. Um, as we grow, we change. Um, so um, if it's going to be a time where you're wanting them to do their own order kind of thing, teaching them that independence of ordering their own food, try to choose a slow time at the restaurant, um, making sure your child is, you know, close to that, um, is able to be heard over the loudness in the restaurant, that type of stuff. Um, having the child order what they want, having them, you know, choose menu items of telling you what they want and playing restaurant at home. We all have those little, you know, food kits, that kind of stuff where we can, we can play this out and see what they get. Again, ways to implement that communication system in a fun, exciting way. Um, so yeah, there are many, many resources out there to assist with the communication. We talked about just a few minutes ago, some of the alternative communication systems. Um, this is one right here that allows us to be able to um, create low tech boards um, and create materials for um, kiddos using low tech communication. I have a couple different ch um, children that are using um, low tech communication boards of family members versus activities versus foods. Um, so he's able to pick options, that type of stuff. So I can very easily print picture cards. I can very easily print um, a game. Um, so I have a game that was made up. Um, I have a kid who likes Superman. So I made up a game for the Daily Planet. He has to go through the different options, um, roll the dice, do our counting. Um, I have different spaces that do different things. But again, I was able to create that all in this um, app our um, online platform. Um, I've heard a lot of, when I've showed it to a lot of teachers and SLPs, they've told me it's so much easier to use sometimes than BoardMaker. Um, 
So, but I can implement, I can also upload my own photos, which is great because I'll have the family members send me pictures of their toys and family members and all that kind of stuff. And I can upload those photos and make them a little two by two inch picture card to use. Um, I can make token boards. I can make the, um, I'm working for boards. Um, a lot of that stuff can all be made on that, uh, on this, on this program. Um, another resource is for your PRC devices, the Unity and um, Lamp Words for Life has um, the AAC Language Lab. If you have your own communication device from PRC, it usually comes with a one year free subscription to AAC Language Lab and Realize Language. Um, so I have a lot of kiddos that when they get that, I have the therapists and the moms, you know, work on getting that set up so that we can use that option. Um, but it has lots of different activities, lessons, resources available to you. You can print off the manual boards. You can print off language charts. Have a lot of resources available to us getting started. They have some really cool, fun activities that you can do based on where your child is on their language level screener. So level one, we can make a crown. We can play bingo, you know, rainbow for me. We're looking at different things that we're trying to do in terms of skills in that language one stage. But again, it's a great resource for information. They also have different blog posts where different individuals post, the different ambassadors for PRC will post that blog um, and provide information, which is a great resource of information. We also have the assistive wear core word classroom. So I print off a lot of this sometimes for sending home with parents just to kind of get them to implement and use the communication. Um, you can print off stuff related to ProLoco to go, the core boards and that kind of stuff. You can also do a core word planner. That's kind of helpful. But I use a lot of these core word five minute fillers. These are great for playing rock, paper, scissors. I can get um you know parents to do some of this type of stuff for homework and it's simple words they can model so i would highlight different words that i want them to be able to model and show the child um, based on this handout um, and give it to them and say hey i want you to work on these words for the next few weeks when you're playing this game um, and that helps them with you know moving around and, and learning different information um, There's off ways um, with the Toby Dynavox devices and TD Snap. You have the um, Pathway software where um, you can go in and find um, different skills to build. It also has the goals grid. Um, this goals grid is very helpful. I work with a lot of different people where we kind of go through this goals grid trying to figure out where they are. Um, in terms of a communicator, which is the left side of the screen on this table, and the top part, whether it's a linguistic goal, an operational goal, a social goal, or a strategic goal. So I can go through and answer these questions and figure out, is this child doing this or not? Have they met these goals? And figure out where they are based on these different areas and the level of communication that they have. But they also have some different pre-made lesson plans inside here, just, you know, core first learning, we have an entire lesson plan with a book on the word want, not like go, stop. All of these type of lessons that are easy to do along with homework and lessons to send to other people on the team. They have a letter that you can send to other people. Hey, we're working on this this week. Could you please help us with, you know, using these type of words when you're doing your therapy session or your um, lesson plans? Um, so again, you have lots of different areas available to you in lesson plans, and this is a free download. Um, all you gotta do is download it to your um, computer system. Again, they have lesson plans for expanding the vocabulary, combining the words, building social interaction, all of this type of stuff. And in the goals grid, when you look at this, when you go into a section, if my child is not meeting that goal, I can pull up a lesson plan right here that's gonna work on that goal. Um, so this is very helpful in terms of providing information to individuals. When they're first starting out, they don't know enough about what a goal should be. Um, a lot of the parents like to go through it. I have parents and teachers go through it just to kind of figure out. We kind of do it at the beginning of the school year and then in the school year we can see where growth has been made um, in terms of reporting data.
Project Core is a great resource for um, professional development. Um, I usually recommend a lot of my teachers and uh, classroom assistants, therapists kind of go through some of these um, modules they have on learning communication and independent reading and writing. These are great resources. They're about 45 minutes or so. Um, some of them are less, some of them are more, um, but they are available and it's a free access through the University of North Carolina's Project Core. Um, a lot of times we have times we have difficulty finding books that the kids like. So um, with Tar Heel Reader, we can either write our own book or we can find another book. So I can type in here, I want a book about spiders. And we come up with a whole bunch of different things about spiders. Or I can say, I want to do a book about Disney. Again, we have different pictures of a day at Disney and what it was like. They took pictures and then wrote a book about it. So again, these are, I can usually find something related to what the child may or may not like to see or do um, in terms of a motivator and be able to read that book with them. And it's a simple book, um, nothing too complicated, but it's a book written about them. Um, So there are lots of different YouTube resources out there for AAC. Um, I think this is one of them. This is Mrs. Marlowe. She does different books and different videos related to AAC. And she usually, first part of it, she tells us what words we're gonna use. Um, Colors of the rainbow. And then she puts it to music and makes it fun. Words, eat, all, love, like, and up. And we're going to describe all the colors that we see. It's going to be great. Come on. The colors of the rainbow look so sweet. Pretty and bright. They're good enough to eat. They keep me healthy. Or so I'm told. If I eat them all, I'll get a pot. So again, she's not modeling every word that's in the book. We're just using certain words on each page to give us some and again the music makes it fun um you also have um the aac family fun group and this one does <clears throat> different playlists for each month regarding certain word lists so you can look up and see that she has um, a song with the different songs. Of course, it has to be gone through and figure out which song is appropriate for your age level child. Um, but again, they have different um, karaoke lists is what she calls them um, available to the students. And she puts them out there every month um, to um, provide information. There is also speech and language songs. This is a vendor that does specific um, core vocabulary songs. Um, again, they also do lots of speech songs. Also, you can see here, um, if you're working on something specifically regarding speech, they have lots of different um, articulation songs, but they also have lots of different core vocabulary songs also um, for the different core vocabulary words. And they will do specific songs for a fee. Um, There is also for families, um, lots of Comptons is a family that uses communication device um, for one of their children. And they do different um, videos on different words. Um, but again, um, this is one that's really do you know that there are natural ways to overcome ADHD, autism, and other behavioral challenges? That you make it go? No. Make it go. Yeah. Make it go. Yay! Good job, Philip. Do you know what we're going to make? Make. What are we going to make? Um, make. Do you know? No. You don't know? No. That's okay. I'll tell you. We're going to make. Make. 
cookies. Cookies. Do you love cookies? Mm hmm Russell, do you love cookies? Yeah. Yeah? So let's go over here because when we make our cookies, the first things, look, we're going to go to colors. Colors. Because we're going to put in some brown sugar. Who wants to put in the brown sugar? Me. You do? Okay, Russell's going to put in the brown. Brown. Brown sugar. Mm. Very good. <laughs> Philip, do you? So again, she's not modeling every word. She's just modeling certain um, words that she has um, targeted for this activity. There's also a speech therapist from the Midwest that has a group of videos that are very handy. Um, she has a group of videos that she has done for AAC um, video models. Um, again, she has a whole um, set of videos that deal with um, different communications doing shared reading, doing AAC vocabulary, what to do if there's a behavior issue, um, when they show aggression, what do we do, um, how do we gain attention, you know, um, lots of different videos out there. And these are short three to four minute videos, but it gives a good liking and good instruction on using an AAC device. And of course, there are probably 10,000 other ones that everybody can share um, in terms of YouTube videos. But again, YouTube is one of those one of those technology things that kids are very interested in. And if we can implement it to do something related to the AAC device, that's even a bigger winner. Because um, if they can start telling me what kind of videos they want to watch or how can I help them find the video they want to watch, um, teaching them how to use the words, you know, what, what was he doing, you know, stopping and playing and videos. Um, a lot of times I'll do that. I'll pull up a video the kid likes to watch and I will stop it and have them tell me when to make it go. Um, or that they want more. Again, it's a, it's a vital, it's a resource, yes, but there are some who have too much of addiction to it and we need to, uh, it depends on the kiddo. Um, as to whether I use YouTube resources or not, um, just based on their needs or wants. Um, so modeling hints and advice in terms to give generally out there to the public. Number one, start off finding that motivator. Um, I have had a few kiddos over the last four and a half years that have been very difficult to find a motivator for. Um, food is always usually the number one motivator. Um, their favorite toy or um, a lot of times though, those that have a communication device, it has never been customized. So you've never put in those motivators. Um, that first customization is the one that takes the longest um, in terms of, you know, getting everything in, you know, you got to put in the kid's name and the you know, location and the birthday, and then you've got to put in all their favorite toys and their favorite foods and their, this is a lot of stuff to put in. Um, this is where I have the parents fill out basically a form telling me about their kid because they know the kid very well. I've only met the kid during an hour of evaluation. That's about it. Fill out this information and give me information I need to have put in the communication system as we're trying a loaner device. And so I'll go ahead and pre-program a lot of that stuff in. I'm like, if a specific people, send me a picture of them by text. I take those pictures, again, put them in the communication device. They have a picture from mom and dad and sisters and brothers grandma, grandpa's, aunts, uncles, cousins, however, you know, specific they want to get. Um, another thing to do is when you are playing with your child, we all have our phones with us usually, let's hit that record button and record the conversation that we just have while we're playing with our child. It could be a conversation we have in the car. It could be a conversation that we're, while we're playing tr trucks and cars, what do we say? And then going back and listening to it and analyzing what words we can model during that communication with your child just one or two words, that's it. Um, they need to see you using the communication device to want to use it for themselves. Um, and then, you know, modeling one word one time a day is better than nothing at all. Um, so 
again, the five minutes is better than nothing. One word at a time, we get there. Um, but I've seen such a great change in some of these kiddos when we started a communication system with them, not just high tech or it doesn't matter whether it's high tech or low tech, when they're given an option of being able to make a better choice instead of breaking down because of the communication frustration. Um, but again, recording that conversation can, you can see kind of things that you say and we can analyze it and say, okay, here you could have modeled this word or here you could have modeled that word. And then we go back and do that activity over again. And that's when we start to model the communication system. Using AAC at home is very important. It's the most important place. This is where the child spends most of their time. These are the people that they spend most of their time with. Um, and it's a hard sell. I'm still trying to sell it to some parents because they understand their child at home. And that's perfectly understandable. But I also have to remind them of that reality of at some point in time, your child is going to be away from your, your home. And they need to be able to communicate their wants and needs. Um, making sure you set small goals of AAC. Don't set large goal of having them you know, speak a full sentence in two months. It's not going to happen most of the time. We need them to gradually want to communicate and sometimes we have to model for months and months and months and months before they even start to even look at the device or touch it. Um, even if they're not focusing on the device, you know, we think that they're not paying attention because their back is turned, they are still listening. So I use what I call um, descriptive modeling kind of thing. I'll tell them kind of where I'm going on the device. You know, I'm going to go to the this button or that button based on the activity that we're doing I'm just kind of telling them oh well we've been able to say this you know and talking them through it kind of thing and they're listening um, and eventually they will get their attention and they'll want to do it for themselves. Um, I have a lot of parents I'm like what are the words or phrases that you want your child to be able to say. I have them make a list of those words and phrases because I want them to realize what they've got to do to get that phrase out of their child using a communication system. So I'll have them write down that list and say, okay, you know, in my family, we say love you more kind of thing. So I want to make sure that they know how to say, you know, I'll start with one word, the more word, because it's been used before. So I would say love you and have, you know, and say more kind of thing. And then gradually work into the whole sentence we're going to model on the communication system. But again, um, having that list of what your child be able to say, because the school environment and the home environment are two different things. Each family has their own lingo. And knowing what that lingo is and making it exciting is a, you see them blossom kind of thing in terms of everybody wanting to do it. Um, I recently loaned out a communication device um, for trial basis um, to a family and I went back I think it was last week and they said it's going beautifully kind of thing said she very quickly you know she'll come and bring the device and want mama to help her find a word based on the interaction that they're having um, she's showing interest in the communication device she will find words and use them that she knows um, she's gradually increasing her vocabulary um, and again involve everybody the siblings are a great resource to use. I've worked with a lot of AAC users, siblings, um, to get them motivated to use the communication device. So I've showed their older siblings or younger siblings how to use the communication system around them kind of thing and getting them to implement it again. If all the children are using it, they're seeing the need for the use. Um, and again, it makes it more fun because what little kid doesn't want to be like their siblings or do things like their siblings? Um, again, it's that modeling and that showing of how to use a communication system that can be very implemental in terms of getting um, AAC success. So I want you all to remember that again, it takes time and lots of modeling to become an efficient AAC user, but the payoff is huge. Um, hearing from different, I've had parents report back to me within two weeks that, you know, there's been a decrease in their frustrations with their child because they've had something to be able to show them, you know, this, if this is what you're wanting, kind of think you tell me what you want, having a way to be able to communicate with their child and get more specific information than just generally assuming that you know what your child wants. Um, but the payoff is huge because I've had, um, been working with some kids, for the entire um, length of this grant. And I had one before the end of the school year be able to say a full entire simple sentence with their communication device. Um, and again, it was one of those days where you 
jump for joy and be so excited that they are finally communicating in small sentences and phrases to be able to get their wants and needs met, but also to comment. Um, so the payoff is huge, but unfortunately we have to put in lots and lots of time to get it to happen. So um, are there any questions that we need to go over? Uh, there may be, Beth. Let me jump back in. Uh, I'll look in the track, but if anyone has a question, go ahead and put it in uh, Slack and then we can uh, put that to Beth. I know there was a question about um, using a device in an IEP. So do you put the, the idea of the use of the device in an IEP with the students? So when they're going to do activities as opposed to just in this, like the special education classroom, is it being used for outside activities and in other places? I know that question was asked. Okay, so in the IEP, you do want to have assistive technology listed in the IEP, but it may differ in terms of the activity as to what needs to be used. Um, so using um, an alternative communication system leaves it open to whatever is working for that child in that environment. So for reading, if we're doing specific characters or something like that, they may just want to have a choice board options to use, but then at other times they may want to be able to use their communication system to communicate other things besides just what's on that paper. So having it um, listed in the, I would have it listed, yes, in the IEP, but in terms of, you know, specifically saying they will use their Toby Dynavox, I want it, you know, for everything, that's not going to be feasible um, in the classrooms because sometimes, you know, I don't want them taking that device outside for it to get bumped around and accidentally hit on the glass or something and break something where, you know, outside we may use the alternative communication board. Um, so again, it's a matter of how specific you want to get in that IEP about when they're going to use that communication device. Okay, there was a, another question. Um, if the learner does not like sharing the communication device, is it just as beneficial, beneficial to model uh, like on a phone app one other person said you could try using um, like low tech, maybe like a low tech copy. Yes, um, using the low, I've used the low tech copies before in terms of modeling because they don't want me to touch their device and that's fine. Um, but um, for SLPs um, out there and for teachers, there are different emulator softwares that you can get of the device to use for that um, teaching period. So for PRC devices, you can download the PASS software and you can emulate Unity or Words for Life. Um, it'll only talk for 30 days, but then um, you can still use it for, again, just practicing words and modeling words, um, and it can go on a PC. Um, and then for Snap Core or TD Snap now, um, if you're an SLP using your ASHA numbers, you can get access to um, a copy of TD Snap to have on your device for free, your iPad. So those are some different resources. All you have to do is is go to the My Toby Dynavox website and set up your My Toby Dynavox account and give them your ASHA information and you can then have access to your own version of it to be able to um, communicate. And each student is going to be different because each student is going to have a different grid size, but you can put as many users in there as you need to um, to transfer back and forth between each user so you can have the same thing they have on their screen. Okay, there's another question um, that says, what about children who are deaf but also use AAC? Do we use ASL in the AAC or just depends on the activity? It depends on what's most efficient for them to communicate. So if a child's been using ASL and they, if it, they, um, efficiently communicate. So I have a lot of them that will do this for more. I don't require them to do it on the communication device. This is more and I understand that. Um, so no matter what communication system they're learning, whether it's they're pressing a button on the screen or they're giving me the ASL sign of it, um, I, I honor that communication. But there are ASL symbols that you can get for some of the communication language softwares. Okay, Beth, I haven't seen any other questions posted in there. Do you want to wait a All second right. and see? We can wait a second. Yes, I did good. 
I was worried I'd fly through and we'd have lots of time. <laughs> But if you need to contact either of us, this is my contact information right here, along with Sabina's. If you want either ideas or just somebody to talk it out with, feel free to contact us at our email addresses or through the Tennessee Talks website. Beth, there have been a couple of people have asked if they can get a copy of your presentation. Yes, it'll be posted to the Tennessee Talks website and y'all, you will also have a copy. Okay, so you, yeah, if you'll send that to us, they'll post that in their form too. But you said there at the website that you have listed. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. I'll double check and see if there's any others. All right, Beth, I don't see any other questions. Okay. So uh, we want to thank everyone for attending this session of AAC in the Cloud. And we encourage you to check out some of the other sessions. And we want to thank uh, Beth for her time today and her great presentation. Thank you, everyone.